Hi, hello. Good, uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone, for the, these lightning talks. I hope everything will work fine and that you will have a good time enjoying all our amazing speakers that are going to present to you very different things, add-ons, uh, work that they've done. I mean, it's going to be great, and I hope no technical problems. We start with uh, Luis, and basically I will always call the next speaker. So next one is Francesco. So. Hey everyone, thank you. Um, I'm just sharing a little bit of a couple of add-ons I'm developing for one year now. It's uh, a couple of Pi menus to assist with uh, game development uh, tools in, in Blender. And it's mostly about uh, representing the, the menus, nothing, any features like uh, special features or things like that. It's really simple and uh, it's a UX change. Uh, it's available uh, since last week on Gunroad for $10, and it's a work in progress. So I invite everyone to check out, uh, download it, test it, and give us feed feedback. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you. So hello everybody, and uh, I wanted to thank uh, everybody really here, because uh, well I I'm an independent art artist and I don't have a proper formation on 3D arts uh, or anything related to render. So everything I learned I learned thanks to the community, thanks to the collaboration, thanks to the answer of everybody, and I'm here to present a, a job that we did uh, with a team from New York uh, this summer, and hopefully yeah. it is tight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so we have some technical pro uh, technical problem. So, <laughs> like always, like I, I was already nervous, and thanks to these, I'm even uh, worse. So uh, basically, <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm I'm mirroring the display now. So if you can just switch to mirror display. Well, yeah, uh, basically, uh, I've been an environment artist for this ad. And, uh, well, let's see it. Uh, it uh, the quality of the. Uh, uh, first, let's see. So uh, now I have to uh, understand how to switch. Voila, the majority of what you see is made on cycle. Like uh, it's a green screen and uh, all the rest is uh, made on cycle. So I wanted to thank first Julius uh, for uh, Graswald. He saved us our life. Because basically I, we had really short timeline and uh, I started as only one uh, environment artist. Uh, thanks, uh, thankfully, in the team, uh, there was uh, somebody uh, using uh, Da Vinci Resolve for the camera, for the, for the rotoscoping and stuff, but all the environment was left uh, to a single person. But after three weeks, luckily, somebody else arrived. But, uh, well, uh, it, we had kind of a lot of the technical difficulty, uh, mainly because, uh, as you see, there is a lot of displacement, like all the, all the moss uh, is made uh, with um, 
um, sub, sub fast uh, modifier and uh, it, it was uh, arriving to more than one hour per frame and so it was a mess and we had to res uh, and hate to uh, basically to find a way to make it faster and to make it also non-destructive because uh, sometimes uh, one hour render for a frame, and then the, the client say, well, but why you don't change the background? And to change the background is a mess, because how can you mask and uh, voila. So uh, basically, basically uh, we had to do a lot of, I had to do a lot of trial to, to optimize everything, uh, basically because what you see it really big, and it's really prominent on the, on the screen. So uh, a lot of, of uh, tri uh, trial render with uh, really, uh, Sometime putting the the shaders to just emission to see how it go how it's going to shape and also as you as you can see at the end uh, uh, these are the render and then uh, there there was a lot of post production to to get the right tones so. Uh, Another problem, for example, is that uh, the particle system uh, of the moss, uh, the moss are like uh, three particles and uh, they are replicated in a super mess. But uh, when, uh, when we sent to render street, uh, we had the moss basically every 100 frame, it was moving because the particle system was like uh, reloading and uh, and uh, that made a big problem because uh, it was like a 20 second, uh, not, not even, uh, like five seconds of sequence. It was uh, 100, 200, 300 uh, dollars. So we didn't have really the time frame and, uh, and the resources to, to do everything. So thanks to Render Street as well because they are really responsive and uh, they helped us a lot to fix the bugs. It's done. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Don't, don't, don't. Sorry, these are the rules. I will ask Bruno, next, um, the mocap guy, to comment. Thank you. You want to start already? I thought I maybe introduce yeah, myself. Introduce yeah, yourself yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Simone Lipschitz. Uh, I'm an illustrator and uh, 2D, 3D web all rounder, and my focus is on uh, creating uh, WebGL applications, and uh, I use for that uh, um, uh, Note Notepad Plus uh, Plus, but uh, you don't really need to write code. Uh, you could also use virtually add-on for that in Blender. So I create all my things in Blender and now I use virtually add-on and I uh, do all my uh, coding visually. Um, I just want to show you a little proof of concept I did um, to make you see what you, well, to inspire you to, to get into WebGL. <laughs> Um, is this one the... Uh, oh, no, this is the film, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I get confused because this is a screencast. So this is a combination of 2D and uh, 2D animation in a 3D environment, but... <laughs> You click just all the interaction in the browser. There's show some text, and here's are the instructions. Um, Nobody will ever see us. First gun. Art. No. Oh, no Could be a little louder. Could be a little louder. Our stage is gone. <laughs> It's so depressing. <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop weeping. You are supposed to cheer us up. And there's no reason to weep anymore, you know. Really? You can yeah, great news. It's time to celebrate. Change? Indeed, indeed. 
Blender and Vert 3D have built us a brand new stage. Aha, uh -huh. even better than before. Time to have some fun again. We are, of course, very grateful indeed. This animation is done with, uh, with puzzles in, uh, in visual coding. Sorry. <laughs> um, all the interaction is uh, all done with visual coding in uh, Virtu3D. And uh, it also has the integrated the physics engine. And these are four rigs and it's can be handled quite well or with Blender. And of course, the in, uh, in WebGL, and which is something which wasn't possible uh, a few uh, months ago even. You can lift up the cards, restore them. and play around with it. It's just an example of what can be done. I just wanted to say that uh, don't be afraid to uh, try uh, out uh, WebGL. Uh, you can do it even if you can't uh, write code. Uh, just learn a little bit of the basics of HTML and CSS and you're good to go. Just try it out and dive into it. Um, I will ask Mike Irvin to come down also. And I give you the microphone. Keep it always here. Okay. Hi. Good to go. Okay. See. Yes. Great. Thank you. Is he okay. I start. I am Bruno. I was here last year in the Latin Talks showing you Core Data. That is a motion capture system that you can build at home. It's an open, project, uh, open source project that allows you to, basically what allows you to do is to translate the movements of your body to the ones of, on a Blender R machine. So obviously it's a way to produce uh, realistic looking animations uh, with little effort. So may, perhaps we get to see, it's not showing here. Oh, okay, so this is how it, look, it looks like. So during this year, um, the project has moved forward and we wanted to share with you some of the news. For example, the system itself is still in beta, but we had two releases and several people from all over the world are starting to implement it. For example, we have um, Robin here from India with his team. They are working in therapeutical applications. There's Nina from Russia who together with a couple of collaborators are creating a derivate system to fit their needs. And there is, for example, also Piero, who is, he's like solidifying the trail of his movements to create sculptures. Uh, apart from the hardware and the software, we work to put together the, the infrastructure that allows us to transmit the knowledge about the system. For example, we created a wiki where you can find instructions on how to uh, build and how to use the system. There's also a forum where you can, you get to share uh, your experiences and also to get support from our team or from also from the community. And one thing where we realized during this year is that even there are, if there are some users that are eager to, to embrace the whole building process, other type of user is more likely to, to prefer to spend more time capturing. Namely, the animators don't really like to stay there and solder. So we are working on a, release, a production release that 
We can allow you to, to just buy the hardware and use it right out of the box. Of course, uh, we are committed to maintain the whole system free and open. We release the software as GNU, uh, GPL version 3. Uh, all the, the communications on, on the server surface are made with uh, clear, non-obfuscated protocols. And you can always, we will always be able to build the hardware at home if you like. Um, this new release will likely to be happening in the first uh, part of 2020. If you want to stay informed about this, uh, please subscribe to the newsletter that you will find on the, on the bottom of our webpage. Um, of course, we don't want to fill your inboxes with uh, spam. It's like we, we are just getting too many of these type of requests lately, and it's hard to keep up with every responding everyone in, on a personal basis. So uh, there are some users that are, are building this, the hardware at home, at home, and we would like to give a big shout out to them. So, but um, the most part of, the, of our users right now came from our, our what we call the beta testing programs. What we do once in a while is to offer a limited amount of suits uh, to, a sele to selected users in order to check. Th that way they can use the, the hardware before it gets released and we get to, to collect feedback that, that really helps uh, pushing the development forward. So since I'm here, we'd like to say hi to <laughs> some of the, of the beta testers from the Blender community. I don't know if Mitch is here. Here. So thank you, Mitch, for, for joining. And also, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, Mitch didn't have much time to work to experiment with this lady, but really thank you for joining. And I would also like to introduce to anyone, anyone of you uh, to Justin. Oh, one minute, OK. Another big uh, applause to Justin, because he uh, was one of the first beta tester, and he kept Joe, uh, posting updates and feedback and on our forum. So, <laughs> how many times? OK. To end, we just finished a second beta testing program. Um, we, we went so well, we decided to build twice as many suits as we were planning originally. And the best part is that we reserve five of these slots for people in the Blender community. So if anyone is interested, please go ahead and fill the form in that we will find in this page. Uh, two things before finishing. OK? OK. OK, OK. <laughs> please, when you fill the form, be as detailed as possible in the description, because we would like to know about your, your background. And I would like to emphasize the fact that we do ask for uh, the cost of these suits because we don't can afford them. So thanks, many thanks to anyone for watching, and many thanks to <laughs> Blender. So in the middle, okay. Hello, you page down. Hello. Do you want to do it? Or I, I do can do it. I can do it. Okay. Use my hands. The even works. Oh, the clicker works. I could use a clicker. Hi. Um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to give a little talk about how not to make feature requests. Uh, first, I'm Jason Van Gumster. I am a lead moderator on BlenderArtist.com, and I also started and moderate on Right Click Select. So, how many people actually know of Right Click Select? Oh, hi, people. How are you doing? I'm the guy that tells you that you should make things more specific. But we'll get to that in a second. So you have an idea. You want to post it. I personally recommend doing it on right-click select. I do not recommend posting it on developer.blender.org or yelling it out into the wind or any of those things. You kind of want to find a place to do it. But when you post it, what do you want to say? So one thing you could say, Blender sucks. Make it better. That's exactly what you don't want to do. Right, because that's not specific. It doesn't tell you tell anybody how, right? What what sucks? What specifically is not great? Because all of us, everybody has at least one, at least one complaint about Blender and how to make it better and an idea about how to make it better. So the the sucks part, be specific about what's not so great, but in addition to that, be specific about what you want to do to fix it. And when you do that, <laughs> oh, there's more. Uh, <laughs> So here's another idea. Here's a two-hour tutorial on some other program. Just make Blender like that. 
the whole tutorial. Just use that, and that'll help, and Blender will be wonderful forever. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, please don't do that. Because one, it's a two-hour tutorial. People are busy, they have things to do, they don't want to do that. Developers are busy, other users are busy. I don't want to watch your tutorial, or somebody else's tutorial, unless I want to learn something, and I'd rather learn it about Blender than whatever this other program is. So, again, be specific. What, in, maybe, maybe you have an example that's in this tutorial, say at time 43 minutes and 12 seconds, watch for about 30 seconds. That'll maybe give you an idea. Still not great, we'll get to that in a second. I'm really disappointed that Blender doesn't have this feature that it actually already has. Um, try to learn Blender a little bit. Try to ask, go on forums like blenderartist.com, org, Blender Artist, I just forgot what that, org. Whew. So, <laughs> go on Blender Artist, ask questions, figure out, maybe you're going about it in a different way that you're used to from another piece of software, and maybe you want to try and figure out how to do it the Blender way. If it still doesn't exist, then you can do the feature request. The other idea is, well, you know, I don't want to check if people have already suggested my idea, so I'm just going to write it. Or, because, you know, forums and sites like Right Click Select, they don't have search features. But, you know, at the same time, I totally know that this exists, but I'm going to write it in my own thread because mine's important. Yeah, if somebody else has already suggested the idea, maybe consider, even if their idea isn't exactly like yours, maybe consider contributing input to their idea to improve that one idea as opposed to having six or seven different ideas that all kind of sort of cover the same thing. Oh, what's a mock-up? So when you give your idea, when you're going to post something, when you have an idea that you want to post, uh, Sometimes we're, we're all visual people. Most of us are visual people, right? We have ideas about how these things are supposed to look, how they're supposed to work, and how they're um, going to behave. And so if you're going to do that, you kind of want to share that in a way that's communicated to the rest of us. So show how it's supposed to work in Blender. Where is that button supposed to be? Where is the button that's not supposed to be that's working the way it is? You want to have a feature removed? You want to have it added? Show where that's supposed to be in the interface. Open up GIMP, open up Photoshop, open up whatever, open up Blender, paint it in there. It doesn't matter as long as it's there. It could just be a plain wireframe, but a mock-up is critical. So here's a better approach to making a feature request. Number one, you know, learn, learn Blender. That should be pretty obvious, because um, if the feature that you want is already there, your problem's already solved. <sighs> Maybe this documentation could be better? Well, that's great. That's something all of us can do is contribute and add to the documentation. Also, oh, one minute, wait. So be specific, one thing at a time. If you're gonna make a feature request, don't say, I have this whole idea about how to overhaul the entirety of Blender. It's great, you should do it all right now. Be one thing at a time, especially on a site like Right Click Select, because, well, we're voting on things and looking for people to implement them. Make a mock-up in Blender. And talk with actual developers, because they're really, they, they, they're actually people too. Most of you have noticed that since we've been here. <laughs> Just the biggest thing to remember, by making a feature request, you're asking someone else to do work for you. The very least you can do is put an equal amount of effort into your proposal. Thank you. And now we will have uh, two talks about like game dev. So I, I will ask Peter Gubin to also come down, and I give the mic to to Mike. Sorry, right. I, it, it wasn't it wasn't an intent. Really? It's mics all the way down. Recursive mics. Sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, All right, cool, hi everybody. Um, over the past year, I've reached out to uh, a few people in the Blender community uh, to run ideas by them and say, is what I'm doing crazy? And gotten mixed response. It's like, yes, it's crazy, but it sounds like a good idea. And uh, I really wanted to share that with, uh, with the larger community of what I've been up to the past year. Um, so I was working in game development and it was, uh, it was a really exciting experience, it was really awesome, but by the end I was, uh, I was stressed out, I was uh, burning out, and uh, what I really wanted to do is be able to, uh, to serve the community Blender where I come from. I've been doing development for about 10 years, 
and, uh, and this is where I really want to be, but I, I want to see it being used more in games, and so I wanted to see how, how do we make that happen. And so at the, at the beginning of this year, I took the little bit of money I had saved up uh, from that games job, and I started a company um, to make game dev tools, to make the process of using Blender uh, to make games better. And I spent most of this year uh, just going around to different conferences, talking to people locally. I'm from Raleigh, it has a, a pretty good game dev community. So talking to people there, uh, going to GDC and doing game jams and going to East Coast Games Conference and SIGGRAPH. And the reason I was at all these things is to talk to 3D artists uh, that are making games and whether they're using, it doesn't matter what engine they're using, uh, it doesn't really matter what tools they're using, I'm just looking for ideas. And to gather all this up and, and say, what are the rough corners of Blender? What are people using it for that's pretty awesome that I can share with other people? And what are the parts that don't really work right and, uh, and as a developer I can maybe do something about? And uh, the people are really happy with Blender and being able to use it. And really the interop is the big thing that I'm hearing back from people because a lot of people, you know, tools in 3D are more like this. And they, they want, and I want to make, tools that are more like this, you know? They have a nice sharp edge to them. It does one specific thing really well. Um, so that's functionality right there. And also from the UI and UX perspective, you know, it has a handle. You can wield this thing to do exactly what you want. And so that's, that's the kind of area I want to get into. Um, I want to make things more like this, less like this. And uh, then this bomb dropped. Uh, you know, Epic Games gave a huge grant of support for Blender, which is awesome because that shows that a major player in the industry is confident in what we're doing here and the direction things are going. And basically the terms of this grant are, hey, keep doing what you're doing. You know, here's some, you know, it's great. Just, just keep making it better and be able to afford more developers and all that. And, uh, and that was awesome. And one thing that wasn't in that deal though is like, okay, Epic Games, they make Unreal Engine. A lot of games are made in that. And then Blender, you do all this 3D stuff. Uh, but there's, there's no real bridge between these two. And that wasn't part of this grant. It wasn't like, build a bridge, like build compatibility into this Blender Foundation. And so, um, which is great because that's what I've been working on and, uh, <laughs> since January. And um, so working on two, basically two sets of plugins. One that, that handles meshes, everything about your meshes uh, to get them from one to the other and everything just works. Bypass all the complications of uh, FBX and other formats and just have uh, native support for Blender meshes. You can bring those right into the game and everything works the same way. You can model in N-Gons. All right, cool. You can model in N-Gons. Everything comes over, it's lit the same way. Uh, all your vertex normals come through fine. It's just a matter of, of making it simple to get things over into the game exactly like you see them in Blender. And the other thing, it's more of a long-term project, is uh, procedural materials. Being able to bring everything from Eevee and Cycles right into the graph editor in Unreal Engine and have everything lit up. That is a doozy of a problem, and, uh, and that's gonna be a while before that's out as uh, released as a product. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, I can get you in on early testing on this stuff, but the mesh stuff is uh, very close to being ready, so if anybody's interested in this kind of thing, please uh, reach out. Those are my, my Twitters right there. And, or talk to me here at the conference because I'm super interested in getting this into the hands of people and having people check it out. So, thank you. Hello, everyone. I would like to, my name is Peter Gubin. I would like to present to you my tools for game dev. And I wrote these tools uh, for myself, but uh, hopefully they will be handy for others. And first tool is OSIM. It's basically uh, a way to export your rigid body simulations and cloth simulations to uh, engines such as Unreal and other stuff. Um, it can also do auto keyframing for you, uh, which will um, do keyframes uh, uh, in some intervals. So. Here is an example of uh, cloth simulation uh, baked to uh, bones. Uh, here is uh, another uh, simulation, rigid, rigid body uh, in this case. 
So as you can see, it transform, transforms uh, each chunk into bones and create your skeleton for you. Uh, here is an example of uh, those simulations in Unreal Engine. So here is uh, some uh, simulations generated in this tool. And next one is uh, exporter. Basically what it does is uh, you recreate assets and uh, LODs for it, and you can uh, assign different collections for, uh, for those uh, LODs and export your assets in one click. And it goes through all your, all your uh, assets, and optionally it can create a folder for each asset and uh, will put any LOD LODs you have into uh, different folders. And you can also isolate your LODs to preview. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I have uh, several LODs here. And uh, export ev every asset I have in one click. So hopefully, hopefully it will uh, be interesting for some of you who work in uh, game dev. And thank you. Good evening, everybody. Well, you're so many. Okay. No pressure at all. That's the last page. Last page. Okay. Can you stay? Can you stay? Don't you leave me when you stay? Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, good evening, everybody. My name is Prisco Vicidomini. I'm 40 years old. I'm Italian. I'm a communication specialist. Uh, with more or less 20 years of experience. So I work with digital communication as a freelancer and uh, as a teacher in a secondary school here in the Netherlands. Uh, tonight I'm going to present you this uh, project of me, Nocera Sparita, the Forgotten Town. Sparita means disappeared. Uh, in order to uh, explain why it, it is a wannabe short movie, I make a step backwards, because this project is born and um, goes on according to every conference of Blender that I'm, I've been into. Uh, so three years ago, I developed a website to collect all the postcards about my hometown, Nocera Inferiore, in the south of Italy, uh, because I want to make a cultural project. But after I developed the website, I actually became instantly static. So what could have I done to make it more dynamic, more alive? And uh, actually, I discovered Blender. It was summer 2017. And I, went, I came to, the first, uh, to my first Blender conference in 2017, and I thought, what? Okay, I better stop and do something else. No, and of course not. I explained my ideas to Francesco Sidi um, on Sunday or Monday after the conference, and he gave me some indication, um, a couple of names, Rob Tautel to say someone, a golden age of uh, Netherlands, and I started following tutorials. And in one year, I managed to uh, realize what was my scope, to design the center of my hometown in 19th century, 1930, because it was completely different. And uh, I managed to design uh, 10, uh, let's say, six buildings. Then it came uh, in, in Blender Conference 2018 came, and I showed what I did to uh, the president of the Italian uh, Blended Italia Association and invited me in May 2019 to present my project in Italy. Oh, yeah, why not? I'm going to do it. And, uh, of course, I still have four months' time. And then uh, I had one month left to do everything because I, my job is completely different. I have to learn Blender and try to follow my idea and then adapt my idea to my skills, and which translates in always doing a model maybe 20 times or more. So on May 2019, thank you, I deliver, uh, this is an abstract of the presentation, this is the center of my town, uh, nowadays as I said it's completely different, but I managed to do also some really weird and basic um, mm, baking, I'm sorry for that if the eyes of someone you is bleeding now, I'm really sorry, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but uh, weirdly enough, people were enthusiastic because you said, oh, you did all of this in uh, this short amount of uh, time. Yeah, working by night in the weekend with my child in my hands. Yes, I made it. Uh, but then one week after I presented this project in my hometown, and then the town hall was full of people, people sitting, people standing, people hanging, hanging from the ceiling. They were super enthusiastic. They interviewed me. I went even on local television. 
Yes. And uh, it was a, a big success. So I thought, you know what? This project has several um, potential uh, use, but I, I wanted to find something that uh, attracts the mm, attention of everybody. So what, mm, what's best than a, an animation movie, if it's done well, of course. So after that, I received um, um, help from other people, from the Italian community, and uh, I managed to say, okay, let's move a step forward, and let's try to imagine how an uh, uh, animation movie would be. So I imagine uh, a walk in this uh, street between two persons, and uh, from July on, I'm busy now with the cameras, with the lights, and with improvements. Of course, uh, the texture have been striped down, and now um, other people are working on it. I'd like to thank Nicolas D'Amore here. And uh, we can go to the next picture, which is what it is the project now, Blender Conference 2019. So we have a guy and a lady. Uh, it's not a tea pose, actually. It's just saying, what am I doing now? I'm making a tea. Um, there's the flag of the old Italian uh, uh, Republic, and uh, the rest is now in, uh, under construction. I perfected the street and everything. It is for you maybe a bunch of uh, boxes that you could have done um, probably in one week. But uh, for me as a beginner, it's been a lot of work of research, finding blueprints, asking people in the building department, and considering where I started two years ago with an idea in my brain and a cup of coffee in my studio, uh, look at me tonight, I'm explaining this uh, to you. So thank you a lot for your attention. <laughs> last, last page. Yeah. If you want to follow me, here are my information. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I will ask uh, Wilhelm to come down for the next speaker. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Matthias from Render Street. Uh, I'm the CEO of the company and one of the founders. Uh, you might have heard of us. Uh, we're helping a lot of people do a lot of renders, uh, tough or easy. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Uh, so it's my seventh year uh, here at the conference. It's also our fifth year as sponsor of, the, of this conference. And it's the first time uh, I'm going to have a presentation here. So. It's going to happen tomorrow, Saturday, at 3, 3 p.m. in the small room downstairs. And uh, if you're using RenderState already, or even if you're not using RenderState already, but want to know how we can help you with your renders, uh, please come in. I'll be talking about some interesting stuff, like how to use RenderState more efficiently. So we have a couple of tricks that you may know or you may not know. So I'm going to talk to you about that, uh, how to work efficiently, decrease your costs, decrease your render times, and so on. Uh, also, I'm gonna present the new interface. We've been working for that for a while. Uh, it's the first time we show it to the people. Uh, you can see it live as well at, the, at our booth at uh, the first floor here. If you missed it, drop by and check it out. It's live, so it's actually the website working. You can play with it, you can see it, you can just even render a few projects. Uh, or you can just talk to us. And uh, one small peek preview into the presentation tomorrow, our monthly plan, Industry One, has just reached 35 million frames delivered successfully. It's a nice number, uh, going on 50. So, see you tomorrow. Thank you all for your support. This is what makes it possible for us to be here. Maybe we, can, uh, we should uh, uh, introduce us. I'm Peter from BlenderKit. Hi, and I'm Vilan. And uh, what we are doing is a shared asset library for Blender. And maybe you heard about us. And we wanted to talk not only what we do, but also why we do it. Because we found out that we didn't explain this may be quite good to people. So we are here to do that. Maybe you didn't heard of us, uh, so I will explain wh what, we, uh, what we do and how we do it. Uh, we have shared asset library, as Willem said. Uh, uh, it is online library which 
uh, everyone can upload and download their assets to and from. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have add-on installed in Blender. Uh, it's right in in Blender 2.8. Uh, you just you can just check it and uh, enable it and use it. And uh, you can s just search your asset, uh, model, material, or brush as you want, and just drag and drop to your scene very, very easy easily. OK, what we achieved so far, uh, because um, first birthday of our service will be in a few days. And we got 23,000 registered users so far. And 400 of these users decided to support us financially, too. And there are 2,060 assets in the library, which are materials, models, and brushes. And I'm very happy to say that 54% of these are completely for free. And <coughs> yeah, and included, that's what Peter said already. And I'm also happy to say that uh, we are supporting actively Blender development out of the money that we get from the users, which was our mission from the beginning. And that's where we come to the why, why we do it. Uh, I'm an artist, and I've been using Blender for more than 20 years. And I think I released about 15 to 20 free add-ons, which are lost somewhere in the forums, or some of them are still inside Blender, uh, partially. Uh, so I really missed a library inside Blender, something I could work with. So I did it for me, <laughs> but also for other artists. <laughs> and we wanted to make something that is free, but that is sustainable. So that's why we are partly commercial. But also we wanted to keep the spirit of the community. So this all comes together, and that's why we made something that is on the border. It's like a marketplace, but also a free sharing site together. And also, like as I said, we are in deep love with open source, so it's part of our mission to do this. And the company has made an oath to give a fixed percentage always to Blender development. And here I come to our finance model, which is a bit weird. That's why <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to explain it a bit. Uh, it's a subscription, so everybody mm, can pay 10 bucks a month or something like this. And uh, basically, everybody then gets unlimited downloads for that. And the subscription is shared to the, to the artists. There are about 160 artists that uploaded something to our database. And um, uh, you actually are supporting actively the artists uh, from which you are downloading your assets. And I came with this idea because I saw there are many artists that um, share free assets online, and they get support with Patreon, which is something really great. I love it. But for me, it became a bit difficult. Like if there are, if I want to support ten artists or twenty artists, I can lose really track of who I am supporting or how. And uh, so that's why we invented a system where, by simply downloading or rating the assets. Uh, there comes uh, some small amounts from the subscription to the artist from which you download. And yeah, that's the last point. And we wanted to make a site where you can support the old things we love, and that's also Blender development. Uh, and that's it. And we want to just say thanks. <laughs> thanks to... Uh, Thanks to Ton Rosendahl, thanks to Blender Foundation, and thanks to all the artists in the community, and you are amazing. Yeah, thank you. So I'm actually not calling anyone because I want to present something. Um, I'm also taking this opportunity, but not a lot of time. It's just one me message. Well, there are more slides, but one message. 
And I want to show a bit uh, a few things that I've been doing this this year. I decided to challenge myself, and I participated in something called Blender 52. It's um, basically every week you have to produce one image. So it's very hard. Sometimes uh, the, the the word the, the themes are more easier. But uh, I, I show you some of the images, and then I'll come to my point. So these are some of the images I did for the, so there are different themes, under the water, laser, um, some low poly things. Um, the idea is not to show you what I do, uh, because I, these are images that I do, some I like, some I don't like less. But the question is, what about you? Are you doing things? And uh, of course, maybe you cannot do every week, but there are so many challenges and online things that I think if you, you start one, it's hard uh, to, maybe sometimes it's hard to do it. I mean, I have a family also, and I try to sometimes in the evening and do a bit, but it's, it's really good. And I, I'm, I'm just listing a few of them that, uh, like game jams also, things, uh, hackathons, Inktober, so they, these are more, Every day, in during one month, you have to do it. I started and I just couldn't do because of all, all the life going around. So choose the one that you like it, that you like, and um, basically just do it. Thank you. Hi, glad to be glad to be here. My is my third conference. Um, first slide, me. I'm a developer, you know, and this talk is for developers. But I think if you are an animator and do a rigging and put some script, you are a developer too, you know. If you are do some scripting for your cameras in your project. You are a developer too. Uh, last uh, 12 years ago, uh, I, I do some interactive stuff, and I get some little tools from the community and use for my own use. Uh, at, at the years, I get a sunboard uh, Swiss Army knife for me for debugging my code in Blender. You know. Uh, these, these tools are collected from the community. Some tools are lost, and I get in the new versions, you know? Uh, that tools from, from the community, that talent guys, and from the Python community is the, 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 the other tools, you know? I want to... For explain, uh, I, I, all my little tools, I make an add-on. I, I do a packet for the community. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to do some uh, metaphor, you know. Imagine like co-developers are mad scientists, you know. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. Really, really, I want to make more a realist metaphor, you know? Think your code, your add-on, script, or driver in Python as your patents, you know? And think you as a doctor, right? Uh, okay, a home doctor comes to the home and talk with the patients. I think like that is like the Blender text editor and external notepads, you know. Uh, when you want to know about the patients, you ask them, you know, with, with the print console statement, you know. Uh, but sometimes the patient is unconscious. <laughs> Blender crash. Or sometimes the patient is in a loop, 
you know, and, and, and respond every time, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, thousands of times, you know? <laughs> uh, well, think uh, we have an other side, is the hospital, you know? The, pa the patient is unconscious, but we have uh, many tools for diagnose. You have uh, blood pressure, heartbeat, you know? And in computer science, I, I think that like integrated development environment, IDE, like Eclipse, PCharm, Visual Studio Code, and developers know about that. And these tools give us the buyers, uh, refactoring, Code 3, Code Explorer, and I think my add-on is like a life support monitoring device, portable, like that, you know? <laughs> it's... One minute. One minute. Oh, oh. It's, it's a Blender add-on that brings elements from IDEs into Blender, like the bagger, Code 3, and, and that. It's called With Blender IDE. Oh, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but it's a recursive acronym, you know? It's a gag from Science Guide. Uh, with Enhanced Empowered Developer, you know? <laughs> right, right now, my idea is complete, but for Blender 2.70 only, I, I need to convert to 2.8. But some guys is gonna be working with that for one year more, you know? And it's work for Windows, Linux, and Mac in a vanilla OS in a way, in a Python package with no modifications, you know? This is are the features, Eagle View, Code 3, Code 5 Explorer, Autocomplete, Debugger, Breakpoints, Pop-up API Navigator. It's, it's because of the decision for, for, the, for the interface. Okay. <laughs> that debugger add-on, that debugger itself, is because my add-on, I finish with my add-on, you know? And eating your own dog food is because I use for that. And I have a demo here. <laughs> you know? How long is the demo? Huh? One minute. It's, it's one, one minute long. I start Blender here with the terminal console, you know? You have a script. But you can navigate through your add-on or your Blender file. You can see your open files. Do you have a, do you have a slide with the, yes, in the end the line, where yeah. we can download the, the add-on? Uh, yeah, it's in GitHub. in GitHub. It's in GitHub now. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have to. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frederick from Blender Diplom. Some people might know me. And I've done a talk about cycles and basically what happens if you Blender, if you use Google to Google Blender and cycles. And uh, sh uh, shortly after that, I was asked to actually try and do the same thing about Eevee. So at this time, I actually literally knew nothing about Eevee except for how fast it renders. And I hadn't even even looked at, uh, of course not looked at, the, uh, at what it means. Then, uh, so unfortunately this talk is a little bit, uh, let's say back and forth, because I was asked to do the talk uh, about EV, so I started thinking about so what it could mean. Then I got told uh, it's actually not an acronym. Then I got told, I got told that uh, Ton actually already made a contest uh, in order to, to find out a good acronym. 
By that time, I was already done preparing my talk, so I didn't reverse it, even though I'm now telling this, and you, you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> point is, this one, in my eyes, was the best, uh, the best answer in the Twitter feed, so I liked that one a lot, but I still didn't want to throw out all, mine, all of mine, even though some of them were finally kind of uh, <laughs> late night ideas not to be taken <laughs> too literally. <laughs> and um, at some point, I just started typing words, <laughs> checking, do we have anything else with an E? Because that, that is tough. Try it. <laughs> Four E's in a sentence and then a V. <laughs> I think this is the one I'm going to stick with. Not entirely sure yet, because I do have a few more. <laughs> this one I think we can leave. <laughs> if I was forced to submit one to the, to the original thread, this is the one I would have taken. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, some of you might remember what happened when I typed in Blender and Cycles on Amazon and other sites. Uh, I was, let's, let's call it complaining, it's, it's exaggeration, but I was complaining that uh, the Blender team takes uh, names like Blender and Cycles that can be misunderstood by search engines for kitchenware and <laughs> similar stuff. So, this is an actual search result from Amazon for Blender Cycles. So imagine my concern when I typed in Blender EV for the first time, which basically didn't have. <laughs> so yeah, um, since I did not find that on first try, I had to do it myself. And... <laughs> And so basically that's it from us. Um, just one more thing. We're from blenderdiplom.com. We wrote the Cycles Encyclopedia, and I think it's worth checking it out for pretty much everybody who does anything with Blender, even for EV users. <laughs> Thank you. So how everyone, my name is Vladimir Elistratov. I am developer of the Blender OSM add-on. So OSM is OpenStreetMap, is a wiki-alike map of the world created by thousands of volunteers around the world. And the add-on imports OpenStreetMap data into Blender. It also imports terrain. It places some simple textures on the buildings. And also can plant trees. But basically, uh, those features I presented a year ago, and now I wanted to talk about new features that are under development right now. So I wanted to bring um, diverse building facades to my dawn. And let's see how it could be done. That's a building somewhere in the suburb of, of Amsterdam. So there are repeating blocks in this building, uh, the red ones. And each block is composed of uh, yellow blocks with windows and balconies. And there is a, a block in the middle with an entrance door. And then inside each yellow block, we have a um, blue block. It's composed of a window and a balcony. So I managed to somehow to describe it via Blender nodes or a custom setup with some hacks. So let's see how it's done. First, the uh, volume extruded out of building footprint. And we set the number of levels, uh, roof shape. And this get, uh, can be set via a socket. It could be randomized. It could be read from the uh, from opposite map attribute. And then let's see another part. Here we design how the yellow block with 
window and balcony looks like. So we have a basement, it has a small windows, we have um, uh, repeating levels of floors, and each floor is composed of window and balcony. And similarly for the middle part here, the middle part is composed of the ground floor, which has the entrance door, and it's composed, and also is composed of repeating levels, which have, which has a small window. And then we put everything together. This red block is composed of the block for the window and balcony, and the block for the middle part. And if they're symmetrical, we just check here an option that it's, it's symmetrical. So here is how it's done in custom Blender setup. Now how it's generated, it's still under development, so a lot of things to be done. Now it's done by textures, and later it could be also generated with some real meshes, so to have more realistic view. That's basically, uh, that's it. And if you have, if you'd like to have my own with existing features or future features for an affordable price, just type Blender Awesome in your search engine. Thank you for your attention. Hi, my name is Raymond. I'm from China. I come all the way to talk for five minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is what we try to do uh, with Blender. So it's called a crystal platform. It's a platform that has planning, tool, tracking, collaboration, asset management, and cloud-based system. So who are we? Uh, we have a website, we publish magazine, we do movies, uh, we have a research center in the university. So this is roughly what we do, everything. We're the largest distributor for animation in China. So China market, okay. So there's only two markets in the world support animation, United States and China. So this is the movie they just showing in China, box office $700 million, cost $10 million to make. <laughs> <laughs> So how much money are you gonna make? Okay. So problem with China uh, in animation businesses, uh, all the tools is free, unfortunately. So it's difficult to push Blender in, but we think that Blender will be very important for the digital media industry in China. Okay, that's why what we try to bring China, uh, bring Blender into China. So. Population-wide, we have 14 to 34 years old, 400 million people, okay? So the whole United States is 300 million. So all, all, the, all the people in the United States are only 14 to 35 years old. So China has 400 million. So it's the biggest market for digital content consumption. So what are we doing right now? Uh, we try to design a, uh, a pipeline for everybody to use. So you go in, you sign in from here, then you get your job. Uh, assignment here, so no more time card, no more nothing. You go in, you sign into the system, you get the jobs assigned to you. Then you tightly go into Blender. So if you're a modeler, you sign in today, so the next day you come in and sign in, it go strictly take you back into what you have done yesterday. So if the animator out there, so very closely tied into with Blender. Then we track the system, track what they have done every day, then do the asset, the markup tools, so everybody will see the markup tools. Then the most important thing is, is this one, okay? So everybody wants to know what happened to the project. One glance, you, you see everything. 75% is complete. Animation, 14%, 13%. Rigging, 14%. Modeling, 70%. So management can just take a look at this, but see everything. So this is what we try to developing right now. So we hope everybody can come in to help us develop this. If we finish this by next April, this is the first beta release, then everybody will have a tracking system. So the design philosophy for this system is shotgun, F-track, and Monday together.
Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Mathieu Dupont de Dinochin. I'm an architect, uh, I was an architect, <laughs> and I'm still teaching Blender and I use it a lot for 3D printing and some strange things, things like what I will show you now. Uh, so I said it. Uh, I worked for some years with uh, an artist that is called um, Roland Cross, and he's making some li uh, lino cuts, uh, chainsaw engraving, and very big sculptures. So last year I talked about the giant uh, flying saucer we did. He designed the, the, the thing and asked me to design the structural uh, part of it. And I, of course I did it in Blender. So it stayed for uh, six months. And then it has been, uh, it flew away again back to the space. <laughs> and uh, as we really enjoyed uh, working together, he said, okay, now uh, uh, maybe we won't sell a lot of, uh, of wood and uh, flying saucers, so let's start a giant octopus uh, in the trees. It's for an art installation in Rouen in France. Uh, so the, it was supposed to be monumental and playful, so Roland said people should go inside the octopus. Why not? So he started the arti artistic design with some sketches, a little model made in uh, real wood. And then uh, he asked me to start to work on it. So first thing, you Google to have some references. And uh, in fact, you find some things. I will let you try a giant wooden octopus climbing trees. You have some results. <laughs> Uh, not giants, you have small ones. Uh, so I made the first design, I, I showed it last year, so I will go fast. Um, we were selected the beginning of the year, so we had some money to continue to work on it. Uh, but it was supposed to be uh, structural uh, correctly and uh, because people were inside. Uh, so first thing is uh, to choose the place where to put it and the uh, first problem uh, it's what I wrote, the trees have the nasty habit not to go grow straight. So uh, we had bended tree so how to get the accurate model I use photogrammetry so 153 uh, pictures and with Meshroom which is uh, of course a uh, free software uh, and to get some okay some basic shape of the trees uh, second problem trees have the nasty habit to grow leaves so if you have to 3D scan some trees, better do it in winter so that you don't have leaves. So in our case, it was not a big problem because uh, we just needed in the shape of the trunk and not the upper part. So I cleaned it in Blender uh, and so that next step, you have to have some references because the, your photogrammetry mesh uh, has no scale. So when you take the pictures, you take some references to it's the most difficult part because a tree is just uh, nothing is straight. Uh, so at the end, we had a five centimeter error uh, in the worst part of it. And then I start to design it. Uh, okay, I had some fun with NPR shader, shaders and things like that, but uh, Roland didn't like it because the, the focus was on the on the octopus, not on the rendering. So we finished with this very basic design for the, the thing, so I was sad, but uh, okay, that's it. And this is the, the part I made calculation for because it was where the people were climbing. Uh, and the other parts I use, okay, basic modifiers is not the interesting part, so okay, uh, array modifier, curve uh, modifier. And what he, we really enjoyed is the back and forth uh, exchanges with the artists. He was saying, okay, I want this bigger, so I move the shape and then the, everything adapts thanks to the modifiers. And uh, you can do quick screenshots uh, to exchange, give the, the size to the, the artist. And this is the interesting part. So no blender in this one.
Thank you all. It's supposed to stay two years, so you have two years to go in Rouen in France to, to see it. Okay. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Liana. I'm from Riga, Latvia, and I'm here on behalf of my friend Martin. He is ditching the Blender conference this year, but for a very good reason. He's having his first kid, and his wife is giving birth to their first child while this conference is happening. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Uh, the video. Okay, no. so, yeah, no. it's good. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about an add on that Martin has developed. So, it's called Physical uh, Starlight and Atmosphere Add on for Blender, and it works for both EV and Cycles. And he's been studying uh, sky and water and light rendering for the a lot of time. And this uh, add-on is basically a result of his research about it. And uh, it basically gives you the opportunity to really accurately uh, simulate, um, sorry, I'm nervous, I have notes. <laughs> um, yeah, it gives you the opportunity to um, simulate precisely the planet planetary uh, atmosphere, any kind of and with any kind of um, altitude. So on the next uh, release, next releases, he will also add um, clouds, stars, and other planets, and moon. And you can find this add-on on Blender Market. It's currently number one, so it's re really, really easy to find it. And currently, while he's writing, uh, I forget the word. <laughs> Documentation. <laughs> <laughs> so, while he's uh, while he's writing the documentation, this add-on is on sale on Blender Market. So get it today and support him. Thank you very much. And excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. I will ask uh, Colin to come to the speaker's note, the place. And hello, my name is Thomas Radicke, and. Uh, you might remember me from some freaky talks in the last years. Um, <laughs> this time it's, it's going to be a bit more simple. I want to talk about a little uh, add-on that I developed. It's basically an add-on for an add-on. <laughs> that is, uh, you probably all know Sapling, the tree generator, right? Since it's built into Blender, it's really easy to make simple trees with it. But it has one large disadvantage. It can only make one tree at a time. And also, that tree doesn't have any materials, and also it has wrong axis orientation, so you can't put it into a particle system. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, and uh, he, he's going to click it for me. Okay, thank you. Um, the thing uh, I did is now called Sapling Randomizer, and uh, it's installed on this laptop here, so I just go and invoke it. It brings up this little dialog here, where I can basically plug a couple of options into the Sapling plugin. So it's, it's doing some automation here. Let's, let's try with the Quaking Aspen uh, preset here, and let's, let's take a 10-piece. Yeah, let's go. Um, basically, um, you just select a couple of presets. You can also make new presets in Sapling and then use them here in the Sapling randomizer. And uh, these are now basically uh, 10 completely random trees based on the preset that you had in Sapling before. So uh, let's see. Let's Go and see what that looks like in LookDev. So there are materials on them here by default, which is also something that Sapling does not do by default. So let's get rid of everything. And let's try a bit more. So Quaking Aspen, that's, I think that's a good preset. Let's make 50 of them uh, and spread them out a bit more in like five meters. And uh, also say, uh, let's prepare that stuff for particle systems so uh, as not to have a curve object as the trunk and the, uh, another mesh object as the leaves. So now the four particle system object is now basically joining everything together, mushing every, everything together, and fixing some access orientation bugs. 
and uh, there we go, 50 trees. And now the fun thing is uh, the whole thing has actually been created as a collection. That means I can now go and make, uh, like, say, a plane, scale it by uh, 50 or so. And let's say, let's make a particle system on that here that is using that tree collection. So no physics, thank you. And render, I don't want to render that as a halo. I want to render that as a collection. And here is my quaking aspen collection. Pick randomly, please. Uh, let's check the particle system options, like uh, frame start one, frame end 200. No, let's go from one to one, thank you. Or maybe zero. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. It's probably very, very small. Let's see, it's some scale. Your particle system's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just press play actually to get the particle system going, but yeah, of course. It says pick, am I on the wrong, wrong collection maybe? No, actually it's the right one here. What, 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 sorry? Am I off? Yeah, well, it did work with emitter earlier. <laughs> Scale random mess. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's, that's the presentation uh, thing. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's supposed to have a thousand of these now. <laughs> oh, of course, I could tell you to imagine them, but um, I actually want to get that working. So let's see why is that not doing. Oh, the plane is part of the collection. Thank you very much. So I got my tiny little forest here in the middle, which is actually a complete collection. And um, yeah, you can actually just go and uh, make new ones. Like, I think if I'm going to take uh, like a Callistum one uh, here, that's going to take a bit to generate. But it's just 10 piece, so let's go. So that's over here now. Uh, that is over here because I accidentally placed the 3D cursor over here. But so now you got, get to see another feature of that thing. and. Uh, if I go and go to the plane and, and switch up the collections here, um, this should actually go and replace all of the trees. So indeed, these are now, uh, well, yeah, 10 randomized versions of that same preset. But if you hit up uh, sapling, make your own preset and export that, it will immediately show up here so you don't have to restart one or anything. <laughs> and then uh, just select whatever options you want and hit OK. Um, <laughs> So now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to write the, the address where you can get it. Uh, but basically, I, I can just tell you. It's uh, github.com slash Thomas And uh, I'll just quickly type it. <laughs> that, yeah, you can write it if you want. Um, the thing is, I will also make a PDF file with all the information on the, all the websites and everything that uh, I'll share online and on the Blender website, this kind of thing, so that you can find every lightning talk and every people contact email. Uh, that you get them. So, yeah. <laughs> voilà. Just put it here. I need to leave for the presentation first. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Being um, like in the middle here. Right. Okay. Uh, then this one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Colin. Um, today I want to talk about uh, this. Uh, for those of you who thought it would be beer, uh, I'm sorry. I just thought this would grab your attention. Actually, it's the glass of it. Um, so no beer for you. Sorry. Uh, I want to talk about a glass shader I developed together with uh, Gleb Alexandrov uh, early this year, January. And 
Yeah, let's start. I have a little sheet here. I'm a bit nervous. Uh, first talk here. Um, why should we need a different glass shader or an additional one? It's actually not group um, because the default glass shader got some problems. Uh, we have no built-in dispersion, at least I think so, and caustics are not customizable. If you want to have caustics brighter or darker and want to have a different pattern or um, a color tint, you need uh, extra nodes. And yeah, same for dispersion. And they cause a lot of fireflies. That's why often people just turn them off in the render settings. And yeah, as I said, you can just add nodes, but you would end like with a big node noodle soup, as I want to call it. And yeah, that's what we did. We ended up with a node noodle soup. Uh, it, now it's a bit lower resolution. Um, don't matter. Um, yeah, how it started. Uh, first started, I develop uh, to develop it alone um, in my room, and as uh, far. As I got, uh, I thought it would be ready to release and it would be quite good. Uh, one day later, Gleb Alexandrov um, uploaded a tutorial on how to re create realistic glass, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I can, uh, will never compete against him. He got like a few hundred thousand YouTube subscribers and is well known for the Blender community, and my uh, product will never be uh, seen by anyone. Um, but then I decided to uh, message him, and three days later, he replied and said, Yes, we can um, build a glass shader together and combine our tools. Um, yeah, I sent him the glass shader and that's what he sent back, like 12 pages of bugs I got in my shader and what we need to fix. <laughs> <laughs> and ideas. <laughs> and ideas what we should add. And that's what is on the next page. Uh, our aims, we wanted to have dispersion, customizable caustics, even more dispersion and uh, absorption, two methods for that. Uh, I think most of you have tried to build glass uh, made of three different colors, uh, red, green, and blue, to have dispersion. We took this a step further and we split the color up into the d three different channels, added uh, a value for the IOR depending on how much dispersion you want. That's what happens here and recombining them all together. And the second method for dispersion, oh, sorry, I forgot that. Yeah, I cranked up the dispersion to a very high value just to see uh, of how it looks uh, on the big screen. Um, of course, you can turn it to lower um, values. That's not uh, realistic that way, uh, just to for show. And here's our second uh, method. It's in Gleb's video explained. Just search for Gleb, search for Gleb Alexandrov uh, Glass on YouTube and it will be the first result to pop up, and he explained how his method works with uh, shifting normals. It produces much less noise, but maybe it's not that good for close-up renders. And yeah, caustics are a big problem too. We wanted to have them customizable, and if possible, um, a bit less noisy than the default ones. Uh, for our ones, you can just turn the default caustics off in the render settings. Because we fake them, they will not be physically accurate, but they look uh, that way. Uh, you can have different colors in them, um, a pattern, increased contrast, and so on. And you can even render them onto, um, separately if you want to have them on a separate render pass for compositing. Yeah, that's uh, the next one, absorption. I think it's quite beautiful how um, the light gets... One, okay, I will come to an end now. Um, yeah, we got two methods, ray length and volume absorption. Ray length uh, is a bit faster, but more noisy, and the other one is a bit more beautiful. And that's how the final shader looks. Many options here. And um, yeah, here's a comparison. Um, beside Blender, I'm also Microsoft Paint a profi. Um, yeah, on the left side, you see the developed shader, and on the right side, the default shader. And yeah, that's the end. Uh, one thing I want to say uh, before I go down is um, I don't want to make this a five-minute advertisement for something you have to buy. It's on Blender Market. You can buy it for uh, $9, but I uh, offer you to talk to me later and give me your email address, and I send you a free copy. And if you still like the um, product, you can support me by buying it or just take the free version and enjoy it. Yeah, thanks. Don't, don't forget your beer. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, I just have to ask the next speaker, which is not from Switzerland, so I don't know. Kajetan? OK. 
Can you come? Yeah, can you just come here and give me the stuff? All right. Um, so I am Matthijs Drijk from uh, Mr. The Rich, my own company. Uh, I do uh, artistic historical reconstruction. It's a fancy title I gave myself because I wanted to make my own job. Uh, a few years ago, I stood here on the stage and I presented to you uh, uh, a video of a VR experience of a castle gatehouse. This year, of past year, I worked together with the Heritage Foundation from the city of Leiden. And it's the place where Rembrandt van Rijn, the famous painter, of which you can find a lot here in Amsterdam, where he was born and grew up until his uh, 24th year. Um, the, the house is not standing anymore, so we created the town, or the, the little corner of the city, the city wall, the street where he lived in, and see for yourself and enjoy. And I will ask Sam to come here. Okay, hi everyone. I am Kajetan Kwasniewski uh, from Poland, and I create uh, Bollywood movie studios. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, see first uh, movie. Uh, <laughs> Egg breakfast. <laughs> hey, słyszałeś? You know, Jutro today egg breakfast. Co to jest What is it, uh, egg breakfast? To dotyczy Your ciebie. Egg. Zresztą, ja I stąd spadam. Weź mnie nie Don't cry, because I can't no cry. Zaraz się rozpłaczę. Hej, co się tu staczasz? Uh, ani everyone z ciebie owoc, ani family. nawet warzywo. What you e, say? Bo wszyscy e, jesteśmy jedną rodziną. E, great family, yes. E, Nabia, What you say? co mi ty tu przytaczasz? E, because to Bo ma być e, jajecznica. E, e, Widać to po płaczącej cebuli. Yeah. Cebula to onion, beksa. E, cry because it's a Jutro onion. ma być chłodnik. <laughs> This is so fruit today. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Ah, no, don't finish. Uh, second, uh, yes, second movie. 
Oh, oh, ah, yes, yes. Like Skyrim? No, 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 no. Uh, play. Ah, okay. Like Skyrim, this is uh, Kajit characters uh, to future. My favorite animation. <laughs> Yes, and the last animation, don't finish, <laughs> small time, oh, this uh, all time ago, historical time, hero's time, my uh, first contact to Blender, <laughs> oh, I did my first animation, see, fun, and cry. Jixing Tsu, największy trener kogutów bojowych cały China. Będzie cię szkolił. Powierzam ci syna. Tak, królu w słanie. Animation. <laughs> Twój syn Not jeszcze yet. nie jest gotów. Ma za dużo ognia. Gotów jest się bić z każdym ptakiem. Jeszcze nie. Jest dufny i próżny we własne siły. Jeszcze nie. Wciąż przybiera ten gniewny wygląd i stroszy pióra. Okay, close at time. Okay. Ale tej nocy... Coś so, się zmieniło. Uh, this film is a gray box uh, movies on the YouTube, my new animation in the Bollywood uh, movies in the YouTube. So, thanks for watching! Create and fun! Thanks! <laughs>
I finally figured out how to add another object, and I was glowing. I just had one question. Where are my layers going? <laughs> Luckily, I quickly found Blender Guru, and this guy has never led me askew. Andrew Price, shout out to you. I was so proud, I posted my little donut online and promptly got roasted for using 2.79. <laughs> 2.8 was in beta, it was near the finish line, but learning new software is like walking up a steep incline. You see, I was six months into this stop motion expedition, so you could say I had some suspicion. I did some research before I made the transition, giving 2.8 a chance to change my position. I saw promises of a better UI. Getting started would be easy as pie. Real-time rendering? On the fly? Layers and collections? That's no lie. So. I started over on my donut render in this completely new version of Blender. I broke everything. I was confused to my center, and the docs made me want to give up and surrender. I couldn't find answers to my questions online, but good news, sprinkles hide everything. It's fine. <laughs> so I finished my donut render, and I kissed it goodbye. Finally, back to my own work. I was ready to fly. I started modeling my first little guy. I was doing fine. Nothing was going awry. Well, he could use a visit to the gym, but he was finished and I had another whim, only I needed an armature to attach to him before the rigging could begin. And with all of this blender training, nothing could prepare me for weight painting. Because of it, I was having problems with my edge flow. Moving an arm should not put a dent in the torso. <laughs> Through the next couple of days, my progress was micro. I was just trying to avoid moving the elbow. I needed a mentor because this was the hardest. So I asked my first question on Blender Artists. Here, I met a friend who gives me knowledge I can harness. Donkavel Tim, you are the smartest. <laughs> there are a lot of things about Blender that I find fascinating, but I really fell in love with it around the time I found shading. That spider web of node modules is groundbreaking. At this point, I know I'm almost done with what I'm creating. I got the rigging and even keyframing. My little guy can walk, I couldn't stop exclaiming. I didn't expect the next step to be problematic. I had to pick a rendering engine, one that was systematic, not erratic, and the internet was divided. I'm not being dramatic. So I looked at the facts, real pragmatic. Cycles uses ray tracing. The results are realistic. If you're looking for photorealism, Cycles is magic. Eevee has its benefits, it's also fantastic. It's fast as the flash, but looks less organic. So, I use them for different things. It's not monochromatic. I use Eevee for simple tasks, you know, more schematic. I use cycles when I'm ready for cinematic. <laughs> I only got five minutes. But if I had to narrow it down to one thing, that beta 2.8 taught me, it's to save my work more often than the queen drinks tea. The release was amazing. This is totally shade free. I'm in it for the long run. I'm a lifelong trainee. Oh, it's already in beta. It's... Later, I met some Maya folks and they all wanted me enlisted. Now, they might be persistent, but I tell you I resisted. We're all friends. I'm not here to start a rift, but between you and me, I think Blender's a gift. Because I knew, even as a new member, that there was something special about Blender, and it had nothing to do with my render. It all made sense when I watched Andrew interview Papatan. It's because he's one of us. He's no corporate spawn. And it's open source forever? Come on. Donkavel, you're our hero, Papatan. <laughs> And the reason that Blender works beautifully is because it's made by the community. I'm Sam, that was my role in verse. Find me after this, I would love to converse. So, thank you for all these talks and um, Thank you, my assistant, as well, Alexander. And uh, you can come on. Okay. So next up is the Susan Award. So we have a little break, and soon everything is going on again. Thank you, yeah, thank you.